After discussing the menus and how we can work with them as far as the options, the methods and events and so on, let's take that and apply it in an exercise. So right now, my plan is to generate a menu from some HTML that I have. Currently on the page, we have the usual links to CSS, jQuery, jQuery UI. I have a style for logging, and we've seen that before. That's just for the logging box that you see at the bottom of the page. And then UI menu with the width 190 pixels. That's the only styles that I have in here. The function log, so it can give it any information, it can write it into that logging box that we have, which is definitely a div that we see down here. So that's the div log, and then we write things to it. And now as far as the actual function is concerned, document that ready function, I have nothing in it. The key part is basically within the body of the HTML code. In here, I have an unordered list with ID menu. In the menu, or on the unordered list, I have list items. Every one of those list items have an anchor tag with some class, CSS class, and then a span that represents some icons that I'd like to use, and then the actual text for that. Same thing for the other ones, just you have anchor tag, and then the actual span inside of that with some classes that I'd like to add, which is basically the icons that I have discussed with you before. To bring that back uh, to, the, uh, to the screen, Remember the PDF page that I provided to you at the beginning that contains all the icons that you can work with with their names. So I've selected a few to add them to the menu like you will see shortly. Now that I have the actual HTML here, I have the, actual, the, the list items, say for example source control, but this is a little bit more involved. It's not like the others. It is a ref. But then underneath that, there's another unordered list. That unordered list has list items, the same thing. Every list item has a href for an anchor tag, but preferencing nothing, just a current page. And then I have a span with some icons and then some text on that span. The same thing if I go deeper here, I get the build and then another list item for debug. Underneath that, there's an unordered list. The unordered list has a list item, and that list item has an unordered list of its own. So now you get the picture. I can build my menu using unordered lists, and I can go deeper and deeper into that menu, to the submenus and submenus, using another unordered list, which is embedded within a list item of an unordered list. Once I structure all that, it becomes simple. Now that I'm done structuring the, the, um, the HTML, let's try to load that in Chrome. You would notice I have some icons that you see in there, but I also see file, save, print, which pretty much on the same level. Source control has different items underneath it. So does debug, but debug has window, and window has some items underneath it, and some thing, same thing for step that has some items underneath it. And then this is the log box that I was telling you about that showing up at the bottom of the page. Now that I structured my menu, let's go ahead and go back to the document that ready function and see what we can do to display the menu. Now, remember the ID of this unordered list, which is the parent of the, of the whole thing is menu. So I'm going to go back to the function in here and reference that item by ID. So I have to say pound menu. And then I'm going to call the function menu from jQuery UI that takes care of all that. So right now, this is the actual menu that I'd like to work with. Now, inside of here, 
of course you can apply other options you can um, uh, handle events and so on i'm going to handle event but in this case i'm going to show you how we can handle that event outside the initialization list of the menu so all what we've done in here then is just applying the menu uh, function on that uh, jquery object after i reference that through menu now let's go ahead and save and then try to reload that in the browser You notice a big difference right now. You see that we have the actual menu items with the icons associated with them. I have the file with an icon of a file, save with a disk icon that shows right beside it, print with a printer right beside it. And then I have project, but project is disabled. So it is test that's disabled down here. Source control contains checkout, which is disabled, find, and then workspaces. And then I have debug that contains window, window contains output and immediate step, we have step into and step over and so on. So you notice the menu and sub menu and how, how you can hover over them, click on them, move from one item to the next, like we see right now on the screen. If you scroll down here and you look at the last one being test, let me refresh your memory on the test on the menu item. It's disabled, right? Okay, let's go back to the code and look at test, that list item down here. You would notice that I have a class of UI state disabled applied to this uh, list item. And this, when this happens, pretty much the item is disabled. But of course, you can deal with that programmatically. But to start with, you can make this item disabled by applying this class to it. And so is the other ones that we've seen before that has a disabled. For example, the checkout UI state disabled as well. So let's go ahead and save all this. And now let's make a little bit more work uh, on handling an event. Now, one thing that um, I mentioned to you before, I have the log function. It takes a message, it writes it to the log. Okay, now um, outside the actual menu, I'd like to handle an event. And that event is menu select, means when the user selects an item from the menu. So I have the uh, bound menu. Oops, let me make sure I have a single quote around that the actual menu. And then remember how we did that in the discussion. We have dot on. And then we provided the name of the event, all lowercase, menu select. And then close that. And then what function would you like to handle uh, for this? The function takes an event and the UI object associated with that and then closes the body of the event. Inside here, I'd like to write an item to the log. What would I like to write to the log? Of course, pretty much this, this item comes through the UI, right? It is UI.item.context.text content. It will give me the content of the text. I've discussed that in previous video, but I'd like to mention it again. One thing as a developer, one thing that's frustrating is knowing what every one of those objects contain. Sometimes it's available through documentation, but in other cases, it's basically frustrating to know what are the elements and how I can get to them. One solution to this is to basically debug it and figure out what's going on in every one of those objects. Let's go ahead and run this first and see how the result look like, and then I'll move to the debugging step. So having logged this to the actual log, let's see if this would work. Let's go ahead and save it, reload the page, and now I have a menu and then the, the box underneath it. Let's click on file. 
and I notice that file has been written to the log. Save, save written to the log. And then I go source control, workspaces, workspaces written to the log, debug, step, step into, into is written to the log. What happens if I click on debug? Oh, notice you get debug, window, output, immediate, step, into, over, toggle breakpoint. You notice all of this has been written to the log because I clicked on the pin at one. Everything else inside of that has been written out to the log using the UI that item that context that text content. Of course, I cannot click on the disabled ones, but I can click on the others. And you notice as I click on them, the actual text is written to the uh, to the log and the log will scroll and the latest one the earliest one uh, or the latest one that we have is written to that log on the top okay now that we have looked at this let's go ahead and either you can click f12 or you can click on the top right corner over here and then go tools developer tools that would load the developer tools that you see on your screen right now there are multiple uh, multiple tabs on the developer tools. For example, I can look at sources and that will give me the source code. Menu.html is the name of the file. I can scroll down and let's say in this case, I wanna uh, stop right here to know what, what's the content of UI. I click on the line associated with that. Log is at line 31. I click on line 31 and creates that bluish uh, a box around line 31 which tells me is going to stop at that breakpoint. Now the breakpoint in here is menu.html at line 31 which is log UI item and so on. So that's pretty much what the breakpoint is. You notice in here that I can step over, step into, step out of the code. I can basically pause it and it tells me the, um, the shortcut keys for every one of those. Now let's go ahead and reload the page it reloads now i need to select one of the items in order to see that event taking place let's say clicked on save clicking on save it says paused in debugger and it stops at that point now every time i hover over stuff i get information if i hover over event it tells me all the information related to event and that's that's why i was mentioning to you this is very handy to know the content of every object that I'm working with. The type of that event is menu select, and that's what we handled, right? Notice in here, menu select. UI has item. I clicked on item, and then item has context. I clicked on context, and then this one has text content. Let's see where that is scroll down text content is save that's why it printed the line save in the log so that's how we can get hold of those objects and know their content using a simple debugger and very powerful debugger already provided to you in um, in, uh, in chrome developer tools you don't have to do anything this is already provided to you you just get familiar with it. It's up here on the top right corner under Tools, Developer Tools. There's a lot of shortcuts. And of course, don't forget about the console because you can take any of those items and type it in the console. It will give you the same information. Or as a shortcut, of course, you can highlight the whole thing, right click on it and say evaluate in console. And you notice how the console evaluated it and gave you the value save. As you can see, there's a lot of information to learn about using that developer tool. So make sure that this tool is very handy um, and get familiar with it because it saves you a lot of time. Let's move to the next discussion and next exercise.